it's nice to see zombies finally breaking through into the mainstream culture after being so underexposed for the past decade, hashtag sarcasm. And few franchises have made more money and been ever more present than The Walking Dead. Most fans will know of the franchise via the TV show starring Andrew Lincoln, based off a comic series written by Robert Kirkman, which is still going strong at 150 issues. Currently in its sixth season, the popularity of the show has also spawned a spin-off series set in LA, video games, novels, huge amounts of publicity. It's as all-encompassing as a zombie horde itself, but in and amongst all the death are Easter eggs, the little mischievous touches that make the world of The Walking Dead seem that much more human. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 20 Easter eggs you probably missed from The Walking Dead. Number 20, Science Dog. In the first season, Carl can often be seen sporting a t-shirt with an atomic paw print on it. That's a reference to Science Dog, a comic character also penned by Robert Kirkman. It's about a dog called Science, who's half man, half dog, and all hero. The character was first referenced in another Kirkman work called Invincible. More on that later. Number 19, Scott Ian's cameo. A horde of zombies wouldn't be complete without some undead cameos. The list of actors who've been reported as either having been approached to be a zombie or asked themselves to be one includes Stan Lee, Charlie Sheen, Christina Hendricks, but someone who definitely was one was Scott Ian from the band Anthrax, who'd done the makeup for some webisodes and an episode in series five. I haven't heard any of Anthrax's music. Anthrax! Good. But they sound delightful. Number 18, brand names. Movies and TV often get around copyright problems by creating their own fictional brand names. Some, like Quentin Tarantino's Red Apple Cigarettes, are exclusive to their own filmmaker's universe, and some, like Oceanic Airlines, are shared across many shows. The Walking Dead has a few, of course. Frank Builders is one, seen on the side of a van. This is a private joke exclusive to Walking Dead, a reference to starting showrunner Frank Darabont's original first name before he moved to America. Finally, Daryl and Dale can both be seen smoking Morley's Cigarettes, which is a common screen brand seen in Breaking Bad, 24, Buffy the Vampire, Slayer, and it's the preferred brand of the smoking man from the X-Files. Number 17, the Walker safety poster. Now this is an easter egg that can be originally found on AMC's website prior to the series beginning in 2010. If you search safe zone in the site search bar, you found an infographic detailing health and safety advice on how to spot someone suffering from the Walker disease. Like the show itself, nowhere in the document does it use the word zombie. Number 16, Evolving Zombie Makeup. The devil's truly in the details, and there are plenty of nice little touches to be found in the zombie makeup used for the show's ever-present undead menace. At the start of season 3, the makeup team changed their tools and changed their design, using darker skin tones to account for the fact that the zombies would be slightly more decayed by the passage of time. This is beyond my wildest dreams of what I had envisioned in my head. The SFX team were no slouches either, digitally removing any water vapor emerging from zombies' mouths whenever a scene was filmed in cold weather, because zombies don't breathe, dedication to the craft of the undead. Number 15, Crew Cameos. More zombies zombie cameos now, this time for the noted behind-the-scenes artist. Tom Savini-trained effects guru Greg Nicotero played a crucial zombie in season one. He's the walker that bit Andrea's sister's Amy. He was given the task because he knew where best to bite to make the effect look good. And in season two, makeup artist Brian Hillard played the super horrible, super bloated well walker. Number 14, a glass of what? A zombie production without a reference to the godfather of the undead, George A. Romero, is a sorry state of affairs indeed. The Walking Dead has a few. For example, in the world of the show, walkers also eat live animals as well as humans. The most on-the-nose one, though, is a sign in Dale's RV that reads, How about a nice cup of shut the hell up? Which is a reference to Dawn of the Dead when one character says, Plan is you drink a nice dog glass of shut the f up. Gracious. Number 13, The Dodge Challenger. The Walking Dead is a flagship show for AMC, but it's not the only one. Remember this guy? Wipe down this! Yep, it may be off the air now, but Breaking Bad was one of the biggest shows in the world in case you weren't alive in 2013 or something. There aren't a lot of references between these network brothers, but there are some. Remember the red and black Dodge Challenger that Glenn takes for a zombie squashing joyride? Same model, same colour shows up in Breaking Bad when Walt buys it for Walt Jr. But the biggest reference is the next one. Number 12, Blue Sky. Yep, Walter White's signature meth turns up in Walking Dead. In season 2, Daryl checks Merle's stash to see if there's anything to treat T-Dog. The bag he pulls out contains pill bottles, various drugs and a mysterious blue crystal substance. Evidently, Merle's been shopping from Mr. Heisenberg. Ain't that right, sugar tits? Number 11, Revelations Reference. The first of a couple of biblical easter eggs. In season 2, the survivors come across a church with a sign outside that reads Revelation 1617. This isn't just a reference to Revelations and its biblical Armageddon, but rather the full passage reads, Then I saw three spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. When the church was opened up, they found inside one, two, three zombies. Number 10, Ben Gardner's head. 
The governor is an odd sausage, he has a bunch of zombie heads floating in tanks and watches him like a slightly more messed up Emmerdale. One of the heads should be familiar to eagle-eyed movie buffs, it's an exact recreation of the severed head of Ben Gardner, which was last seen giving Hooper a fright in Jaws. Number 9, the pirate governor. Turns out the eye patch wasn't enough. After the governor loses an eye to Michonne and becomes a disheveled eye-patched man, there's one shot of him in season 4 where he's lying on a bunch of pillows. On one of the pillows is a parrot, positioned to make it look like the bird is on his shoulder. There's a joke I can make about The Walking Dead being rated R. I think I'd rather die. Number 8, Lincoln Goes British. Some fans don't know, but Andrew Lincoln follows in the Hugh Laurie tradition of British boys yanking it up on US TV. People out there are always looking for an angle. But Lincoln's native accent does make an appearance in the show. In season 5, Tyrese hallucinates a radio report about cannibals narrated by a posh British accent. Moving across the countryside unfettered. The plummy tones belong to the man who played Rick Grimes himself. So what, Lincoln? The lead role wasn't enough, you have to take jobs away from other posh British voiceover artists. That is unbelievable. <laughs> That's extremely okay. good. Number 7, Wolf Fight. In season 5, when Carl discovers a teen hangout in Alexandra, he finds a comic book. Nope, it's not his old pal Science Dog. Instead, the comic is called Wolf Fight, which is a dual reference both to the wolves, a band of murderous assholes, but also a reference to the astounding Wolfman, yet another comic created and penned by Robert Kirkman. The guy gets around. Number 6, The Zombie Self-Help Guide. Alongside season 5 and the introduction of Alexandria, the safe zone, AMC released online a Google Street view of the town. Pan the camera just right, and you can see a book called Zombies for Zombies The Work and Playbook. Is it Zombies for Dummies or a colouring in book thing? Who knows, but what it is, is one of the only actual official uses of the word zombie in the entire history of The Walking Dead. Number 5, Invincible. It was only a matter of time before a copy of Invincible, Kirkman's other big hit for Image Comics, made it into the show, and Enid can be seen holding a copy of Invincible 45 in her room. So, this is to say that Robert Kirkman exists in the world of The Walking Dead. Hmm, he's probably zombified though. R.I.P. Rob. Number four, we will rise again. Now this is a clever one. When Rick becomes the new constable of Alexandria, he gets given a spiffy new uniform. On the uniform sleeve, there's a patch which features a Latin phrase which translates as, we will rise again, a phrase uttered by the governor in season three, a foreshadowing of Rick's potential to become the governor himself in his new position of authority. Number three, George's crate. In season five, when the survivors escape from Terminus, in the foreground of the shot, we see a crate inscribed with the words, ship to Horlicks University via Julia Carpenter, which which is another George A. Romero reference, this time to his 1982 horror anthology film, Creepshow. In that movie, a crate is found which contains a horrible Yeti-like creature that enjoys eating people on the side, shipped to Horlicks University via Julia Carpenter. Number 2, Father Gabe Zombie Church. Father Gabriel is a tricky old soul, mostly because his church is covered in reference to the living dead. Above an archway reads, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and on the wall are five Bible verses, and when you look them up, they're all to a man about the dead rising, or life amongst the dead, or living flesh. What a cheery little preacher he is. Number 1, The Degrading Titles. Here's one you'll only really notice when you're a couple of seasons in. With each passing year, the show's titles decay just a little bit more. Executive producer Gail Hurd confirmed it was an easter egg that, like the zombies and the world, with each passing year, the titles were degraded before our very eyes. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about them in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and I'll see you soon.